Hello everybody. A lot of people were asking me to make a video about the changes that they're making to the Vegas event. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the first thing that a lot of people noticed is that battles during the Vegas takeover will have 100% wounded troops. However, keep in mind that here they've only written battles during this Vegas Casino Takeover will have 100% wounded troops. My guess is that this rule is only going to apply to this current Vegas event. It's not going to apply to the future events because this is the first time that we're having this event. So I'm assuming that they want us to have 100% wounded troops so that we can test this event properly. They've also talked about this Las Vegas Healing Center where the wounded crews will go to. And the troops in this healing center, their resource cost will be reduced by 90% and the healing speed will be increased by 100%. But you have to keep in mind that you need to heal your troops before this healing center closes because once the healing center closes, you won't be able to heal them they'll be converted into lost crews. So you need to make sure you heal them within one week of the end of the Vegas event. Now they've also introduced this new concept of faction. So there's going to be a red faction and a blue faction. And the red faction is going to compete against the blue faction. And so now in this new Vegas map, instead of there being just 12 cities, you're going to have 24 cities. And 12 of those cities are going to be in the red faction and the other 12 are going to be in the blue faction. And you have to keep in mind that attacking your own faction will give you half the kill points. It says over here that points from internal faction disputes are reduced by half. So in the earlier version of Vegas, Attacking your own city gave you half the points, but now attacking your entire faction will give you half the points. So if you want to trade points in Vegas, you need to find someone who's in an opposing faction. And then here it shows you the map. The cities are going to be here on the outside. The 24 cities are going to be a red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, and so on. And then these are going to be all of the buildings in the middle. Uh, these eight buildings that you see here, the big eight buildings. These are called the island city halls. There are eight island city halls. And so it seems like eight cities will be able to get buffs from these eight island city halls. And then in the center, you have this high roller casino and occupying this high roller casino will determine who gets the chief legislator position. I'm not really sure why they're splitting us into two factions because at the end of the day, only one city can occupy this central casino. So it really doesn't make sense for them to have like two teams because at the end, cities from the same faction are going to compete against each other for the center. And in all of those battles, they're only going to get half the kill points, which really doesn't make sense. Then they talk about all the different ways you can get points, for example, by gathering resources, by killing street forces on the map by training troops and by killing other enemies on the map. And it seems like you won't be able to get points for doing all of these at the same time. On day one, gathering resources will give you points. On day two, attacking these casino forces will give you points. On day three, training troops will give you points. And on day four, killing enemies will give you points. At least that is what my understanding is after reading the rules of this event. Okay, so there are going to be four phases to this event. There's this pre-registration phase, and this pre-registration phase lasts eight days in total. The registration itself opens on the fifth day, so you can say the pre-registration phase lasts four days, and then the registration phase will last another four days. Then there's the matching and display phase, which lasts two days, which basically means they'll show you which opponents you're competing against during the matching and display phase. Then the battle phase is going to be six days and then the battle exhibition phase will be two days. So the first day of the battle phase will be this black tide event where it seems like we will have to attack these black tide forces and the maximum damage done to these black tide forces will be used to calculate our scores. 
I think this event is going to be similar to the Legacy Rumble event that we have in the game, where we have to attack this vehicle to get elite blueprints, but instead of attacking a vehicle, we're going to attack these Black Tide forces. And just like there's a leaderboard for the highest amount of damage done to this vehicle in a single attack, there's probably going to be a leaderboard for the highest amount of damage done to these Black Tide forces. And the sum of these highest damages of all the leaders of a faction will be used to calculate the final score. So basically, whichever faction does more damage to these Black Tide forces, they're going to win. But the damage needs to be done in a single attack and not multiple attacks. And over here it says that each victory earns one faction point and all faction members get a 0.5% crew attack increase on the map. So I'm not really sure how these battles will work, but my guess is that they're going to do 1v1s between cities of different factions. So let's say there are cities 1 to 24 competing on the same map. And let's say city 1 is blue, city 2 is red, city 3 is blue, city 4 is red, and so on. Then for this round, they're going to pair, let's say, City 1 and 2, City 3 and 4, City 5 and 6, and so on. And City 1 will compete against City 2. And let's say if City 1 wins, then City 1 will get 1 point for the blue faction. And the entire blue faction will get 0.5% more crew attack. And let's say if City 4 wins between City 3 and 4, then City 4 will get 1 point for the Red Faction, and the entire Red Faction will get 0.5% crew attack. And let's say at the end, if 7 Blue Faction cities win, and only 5 Red Faction cities win, then the Blue Faction will get 10 Faction points extra, because it has more victories than the Red Faction. But again, this is all just a guess based on the rules that they've written here. We'll have to wait for the event to actually begin to know how it actually works. Then the next progression is going to be remove obstacles where you have to gather and raid casino forces. And the points will simply be the total gathering points plus the total casino forces points. And each victory will give you one faction point and it'll boost your entire faction's crew defense by 0.5. And also, if your faction wins more battles than your opponent, then you'll get 10 extra faction points. Then the third day is going to be crew training, which simply requires you to train troops. And again, you get one point for each victory, and your faction's healing speed will go up by one as well. And if your faction wins more battles than your opponent, then your faction gets 10 more points. Then the progression four is going to be Casino Storm, where you have to start occupying casinos. So if you look at the map, it seems like there are 12 casinos on the map. And so two cities will be competing for one casino each. And so the one that stays longer will be declared the winner. And if there's a tie, then both sides will be considered victorious. Now here you get two faction points for each battle won. And if your faction wins more battles than your opposing faction, then you'll get 40 points. Then day 5 is going to be the official post contest where you'll be fighting to occupy the 8 island city halls. And this will also last one day. Again, you get 2 faction points for each battle won. And if your faction wins more battles than your opposing faction, then you get 40 points. And finally, day six is going to be the final battle where you have to occupy the high roller casino in the center. This battle will also last one day and you get four faction points for each battle won. And if your faction wins the most number of battles, then your faction will get 100 faction points. And then finally, you have the battle exhibition phase where you can simply just view the results of the battle. Then there are these official posts as well. For example, now the Chief Legislator post gives you 18% crew attack, but it also increases your Renegade power and technique by 5. And then there are all of these island city hall officials, where you get vehicle attack and some Renegade attributes, vehicle defense Renegade attributes, biker attack Renegade attributes, and so on. And then there are these regular Vegas official attributes, 
which can be appointed by this chief legislator. And here you get the regular Hitman coin production buff plus training speed, etc. And obviously there are these servant debuffs as well. And the rewards seem to be the exact same. Uh, here you have faction battle rewards, which are new. But then the chief legislator rewards have stayed the same, it seems. And so have the kill ranking rewards. You get this flag column for finishing in the top five. And you also get these combined turf effects, the advanced combined rank up coupon, and the new next gen transform voucher. So the rewards seem to have remained the same. So let me know what you guys think about these changes that they're making to the Las Vegas Casino Takeover. And also keep in mind that everything that I said in this video is just my opinion. If you have any different opinions about how this event is going to play out, then let me know that as well in the comments down below. Before I end this video, I'd like to thank all of my patrons for the support. To support me, you can find my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching the video guys and I will see y'all in the next one.